magaling sa ITS Information Technology Skills. Kung bago ka sa channel na to, don't forget to subscribe at hit na yung notification bell para sa iba pang tutorial videos about computer programming. So in this video, we're going to have a CPU scheduling algorithm. So, round robin ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. So, what is round robin? The process are selected on first come first serve basis. However, each process is given a limit to execute at the CPU. So, ibig sabihin guys, meron lang limit yung isang process para ma-execute siya sa CPU, then lalabas siya, then next yung susunod sa kanya na process. The time limit, kung minsan tinatawag yan as the quantum time. Let's say yan po si CPU. Then we have three processes. Ang mangyayari, for example, meron tayong quantum time na 3. So, si P1, ma-execute siya or pupunta siya sa CPU for 3 minutes. After 3 minutes, lalabas ulit siya, then sunod si P2. So, for example, meron tayo nung table na to. We have here 4 processes and meron siyang CPU verse. Kung titignan nyo, wala siyang arrival time. So, let's say, yung apat na processes na yan, Sabay-sabay silang dumating dun sa CPU. So, sabihin na lang natin magkakaibigan sila tapos sabay-sabay silang dumating sa isang destination. So, for going to create the gun chart, kailangan muna natin yung time quantum. So, yung time quantum dyan, sabihin natin 3 millisecond. So, ngayon guys, gawin na natin yung gun chart. So, dahil sabay-sabay silang dumating, Sasabihin na lang natin or consider natin na si P1 ang una sa pila. So, first nating ipaprocess is si P1. So, ibig sabihin, meron siyang 3 millisecond para mag-process. So, at time 3, ito si P1. Before natin palabasin si P1 or before siya umalis dun sa CPU, huwag mo minus muna kung ilan yung na-execute na time ni P1. So, ang original CPU burst ni P1, we have 17 minus 3, yun yung quantum time. Meron siyang remaining time na 14. So, after ma-execute or lumabas si P1, next na papasok si P2. Merong CPU versus si P2 na 3. That is equal to the quantum time na 3. So, ibig sabihin, 3 minus 3, 0 na yung remaining time ni P2. Ibig sabihin, tapos na si P2. So, matatapos si P2 at time 6. So, paano naging ganon? Yung burst time niya na 3 plus 3 na natapos si P1 equals 6. So, tanggalin lang natin si P2 dun sa table para hindi tayo mahilito. Then, next dun sa pila is si P3. So, ma-execute si P3 ng 3 millisecond. So, 6 minus 3, meron siyang remaining time na 3. Then, next... Si P4 naman, so si P4 naman, that is less than the quantum time. So, kapag less than quantum time, automatic yan. Ibig sabihin, matatapos na siya dun sa first na execution niya or allocation niya dun sa CPU. At time 9, papasok si P4, matatapos siya ng time 11. So, paano naging ganon? Yung 9 plus 2 na CPU verse ni P4, that is the time na natapos siya. So, tanggalin din natin siya dun sa table. The next babalik ulit yan dun sa taas. So, that is the round robin. So, pagkatapos dun sa pinakalas na process, babalik ulit yan dun sa taas. Then, gagawin niya ulit si P1 ng 3 millisecond ulit. So, P1, 3 millisecond ulit, 11 plus 3. Tapos, magma-minus ulit dito sa remaining time. So, the remaining time is 14 minus 3. Meron siyang 11 na remaining time. The next Si P3, kasi siya yung naiwan pa. So, meron siyang remaining time na 3. Ma-execute din siya ng 3 na quantum time. So, P3 plus the remaining time na 3. 14 plus 3, that is 17. So, natapos na si P3 at that time. Then, we have the remaining P1. So, pwede na natin dire-direchohin yan. Kahit di na natin siya hati-hatiin into 3 milliseconds kasi nag-iisa na lang siyang process. So, the remaining time is 11. 11 plus 17, yun na po yung buong execution or allocation ni P1. So, matatapos siya at time 28. So, let's compute the turnaround time. Time finish minus arrival time. Kay P1, natapos siya at 28. So, yung dulo yung time finish ni P1. 
dumating ta dumating siya at time 0 so 28 minus 0 that is 28 p2 natapos siya at time 6 6 minus 0 that is 6 for p3 natapos siya at time 17 dumating siya at 0 so 17 minus 0 that is 17 p4 11 minus 0 that is 11 so in computing the average turnaround time add natin lahat ng na compute na turnaround time Divide by number of processes. So, ibig sabihin, divide by 4. So, we have 28 plus 6 plus 17 plus 11 divided by 4. That is equal to 15.5. Ngayon, waiting time naman tayo. So, for waiting time, that is turnaround time minus CPU burst. For process 1, ang turnaround time niya is 28. Then, the CPU burst is 17. So, 28 minus 17, that is 11. P2, turnaround is 6. Minus the burst time, that is 3. 6 minus 3, that is 3. P3. Turnaround time is 17 minus 6, the burst time, that is 11. P4. Turnaround time is 11 minus 2, the burst time, that is 9. So, let's compute the average waiting time. Ganon then add natin yung computed waiting time, divide by number of processes. So, we have 11 plus 3 plus 11 plus 9 divide by 4. That is equal to 8.5. Next example for round robin. Let's say we have 5 processes. Meron tayong arrival time ngayon and meron din tayong CPU burst. And we have the quantum time equals to 4. Now, let's try to create the Gantt chart. So, at time 0, iisa pa lang yung process natin. We have... P1. Meron siyang burst time na 8. And, ibig sabihin, kahit meron siyang burst time na 8 dahil sa round robin tayo, magraran muna siya ng 4 millisecond. So, nagran siya ng 4 millisecond and at time 4, meron tayong dalawang process na dumating that is P2 na dumating nung time 3 and P3 na dumating at time 4. So, ibig sabihin, first come first serve ulit ang ipa-follow natin. But before that, ima-minus natin kung ilang oras ang na-execute ni P1. So, that will be the remaining time. So, si P1 na-execute siya ng 4 millisecond. Meron siyang burst time na 8. 8 minus 4. Meron siyang remaining time na 4. The next natin ipa-process is si P2. So, process si P2 ng 4 milliseconds depende po dun sa quantum time natin. So, sa quantum time kasi natin, meron tayo 4 4 is equal to 4, ibig sabihin, natapos na din si P2. So, that is the remaining time na. 0 na siya. So, matatapos si P2 at time 8. So, paano naging ganun? 4 plus 4 na burst time ni P2, that is equal to 8. Then, at time 8, meron din dumating na bagong process. Nung time 6 pa talaga. So, ibig sabihin, habang nag execute si P2, dito sa kalagitnaan, dumating si P4. Pero if follow pa rin natin yung first come, first serve. So, ang una sa pila ngayon, meron si P3. So, si P3 meron siyang CPU burst na 5. Pero, may execute lang siya ng 4 millisecond. So, lalagay natin si P3. So, 8 plus 4 millisecond, that is 12. So, ma-minus natin kung ilang oras ang remaining time ni P3. So, 5 minus 4, that is equal to 1. 1 na lang yung remaining time ni P3. Then, at time 10, kalagitnaan din, habang napaprocess si P3, dumating si P5. Meron siyang CPU burst na 2. Pero ang next na sa list is si P4. So, execute natin si P4. May execute lang si P4 ng 3 milliseconds kasi hindi na niya abot yung quantum time natin. So, 12 plus 3, matapos siya at time 15. So, matatapos na rin si P4. Tanggalin natin siya sa table. Then, next natin is si p Si P5, mas maliit din yung CPU burst niya kaysa sa quantum time natin. So, ibig sabihin, matatapos na rin si P5. Kailan siya matatapos? At time, 17. 15 plus 2 na CPU burst, that is equal to 17. Tanggalin din natin siya sa table. Tapos, babalik to dun sa naiwang process, that is P1 and P3. So, dahil first come, first serve, unang ma-execute dyan si P1. So, ibig sabihin, ma-execute ulit siya ng 4. So, the remaining time is 4. 4 minus 4, that is 0. Ibig sabihin, tapos na rin si P1. So, matatapos si P1 at time 21. So, paano yun? So, 17 plus 4, 
that is 21. Then, next na mapaprocess, of course, si P3. Meron siyang remaining time na 1, so isa na lang yung maprocess sa kanya. 21 plus 1, that is 22. Ngayon, compute natin yung turnaround time. So, time finish minus arrival time. P1, natapos siya at time 21. Dumating siya at time 0, so meron siyang time finish na 21. P2, 8 minus 3. So, natapos siya at time 8. Mer dumating siya nung time 3. So, that is 5. P3, natapos siya nung 22. Dumating siya nung 4, that is 18. P4, 15 minus 6, that is 9. P5, 17 minus 10, that is 7. Then, let's compute the average turnaround time. Add a let natin yung mga na-compute na turnaround time divide by 5 because we have 5 processes. So, we have 21 plus 5 plus 18 plus 9 plus 7 divide by 5, that is equal to 12. Then, we have the waiting time, that is turnaround time minus CPU burst. For P1, ang turnaround time niya is 21. And the CPU burst is 8. So, 21 minus 8, that is equal to 13. P2, turnaround time niya is 5. Then, the CPU burst is 4, so that is 1. P3, 18 minus 5, that is 13. P4, 9 minus 3, that is 6. P5, 7 minus 2, that is 5. So, let's compute the average waiting time. Add natin yung mga na-compute na waiting time. Divide by 5. So, 13 plus 1 plus 13 plus 6 plus 5. Divide by 5. That is equal to 7.6.